strangers to um, personal customization. It's become part of our everyday lives, uh, thanks to the internet mostly. At some point, everyone in this room will have their face on an M&M, if they haven't already. Um, so because of this, my approach to jewelry design does not seem so extreme anymore. Um, I like to think of myself as a storyteller uh, through metal, and I learned to be a creative storyteller when I was a kid thanks to the help of my two um, very mischievous and imaginary friends, Paco and Chala. Um, I can tell you lots of stories about them, but not tonight. Um, I want to create, <laughs> I want to create jewelry that tells your story. Um, but not only that, it needs to be beautiful and comfortable, um, and it also needs to make you happy. <laughs> and be very functional in everyday life. <laughs> this was a fail. <laughs> um, so I came up with this mantra. I use it to keep um, these things in my mind when I'm designing wedding and engagement rings. Um, and it's, it's very simple. Your ring should be a part of who you are already, which is not written up there. Um, not become part of who you are. It needs to reflect you. Um, so anyway, in order for me to create something that represents who you are, I really have to know who you are. Um, so I tend to ask a lot of questions um, on the first client interview, accompanied by alcohol, of course, to help the conversation flow. In my current condition, I'll have you know I am using caffeine only as a stimulant for conversation. Uh, anyway, story time. This is Brooke and Travis, um, some of my clients. and. Um, the most important part of their story is their love story, which um, is they fell in love in Rome studying architecture. And that's the most important moment that they wanted to convey um, in their ring. Uh, so phase one was the questionnaire. Phase two is design research. So this is like my sketchbook with um, designs, etc. I started out as a graphic designer. So um, I think you can see through the work uh, a design, a very graphic influence. Um, what starts out as an idea becomes a sketch, and that sketch becomes a scale illustrator drawing, and then from that a CAD file is made, and then a wax model, and after that is um, the, it's cast into metal. Um, and so our next slide. Uh, is the finished piece, and this one is cast in palladium, and it has uh, 13 conflict-free diamonds in it. And a really funny story about this piece is, um, when Brooke received this ring during the um, proposal, she thought that this ring was so perfect and it embodied what she wanted so much, she didn't actually believe that I made it, which I took as a huge compliment. <laughs> um, so here they are, married, happily ever after. Um, and I designed that ring to have a wedding band to go with it, but at the, um, in the end, she decided she just wanted one ring, which is a trend I'm seeing more and more. So no wedding band, just an engagement ring. Ah, Jonathan and Nina. Um, so both super lighthearted, free spirits um, with really unique individuality, and they live on the beach, and you can tell that they have a good life. Look at that light in their eyes. Only people who live on the beach look like that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to deal with weather like we do. Um, so Nina's ring is inspired by her second true love, which is her leaded glass work. And um, it's very clean and classic, just like Nina. The center stone belonged to Jonathan's mother, so we wanted to make sure we really showcased that. Um, and the side stones are sapphires, and the only real significance to that is that Nina likes sapphires. So this is Jonathan's ring, and I could spend the entire six minutes and 40 seconds talking to you about Jonathan. Um, but So he calls me one day and he says, Carol, I know exactly what I want. I want a Native American feather ring with silver, you know, like silver and turquoise. I'm like, Jonathan, I don't do that. <laughs> Anyway, he got this other feather masterpiece. Here they are. Um, they're both 
I think, really representative of their individuality. Um, also, the clear lack of consistency in the photos shows I'm still learning how to photograph my work. Valerie, maybe we can talk after the show. <laughs> um, so again, happily ever after, Jonathan and Nina. Nina also decided to go with only one ring because it was everything she wanted and all she needed, which sucks for sales. <laughs> but, but you know what? You cannot beat that kind of client satisfaction. OK, so um, last story. God, it's almost over. Um, is This is Meredith and Josh. Meredith is an avid traveler. And when she's not traveling, she's thinking about it. Um, and Josh is living the dream as a musician. Um, their story, that uh, the story that we wanted to tell with their rings is that um, they were getting married in Venice. And it was a place that they had both been to and loved. And so that's where the design went. Um, it also needed to be really functional because they both work with their hands. They um, needed a living ring, not a lounging ring. What is a lounging ring, you say? A lounging ring is something that looks great, but it's not super functional in everyday life. It snags on sweaters. Your hand gets stuck in your pocket. Can't wear gloves. <clears throat> Etc. Oh, these are design rejects. Um, I thought you might want to see some of the things that didn't make it, you know, cutting room floor stuff, etc. Here are their finished pieces, and obviously I did not take this photo. That's why it looks good. Um, <laughs> this was my first, like, real job as a custom jewelry designer, my first wedding set, and I thought it turned out really good, fortunately, so did they. Um, <laughs> And after that, I realized it was exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so anyway, I'm super happy to be able to do this as my job. Um, and it, it's really, it, it makes such an impact. I mean, to, for me to make such an impact in people's lives with just this tiny little piece of metal and, you know, what I do is really incredible. So thanks, everybody, and um, have a good night. Thank you.